All right, so we have this exercise, and this is a little weird because I don't know how we're supposed to prove this because this exercise, um, the, the hint, estimate this thing in terms of H and the entries in the matrix of T, sort of implies that we want to be using a particular fact which is a really important fact in and of itself, but which hasn't been discussed and which I don't think, or at least I don't think it has been discussed at all, but the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. Schwartz or Schwartz? I think it's Schwartz. Um, but in any case, so if we want to do this in a way that follows the hint, uh, then we will be using Cauchy Schwarz. And by the way, um, I'm not guaranteeing that you have to use Cauchy Schwarz in this in order to prove it in this way. I hope there's a way to not use it because I feel like it deserves its own separate proof. But anyways, and in in fact, I think I've seen. Um, Proofs of Cauchy Schwarz which use calculus. Um, like you do a you can you can form a certain um, function and find a critical point of this function, and that's how you prove Cauchy Schwarz. Um, but that requires calculus, which is what this book is rigorously introducing. So we can't use that sort of proof to prove Cauchy Schwarz, and I think there might be more like linear algebra versions of Cauchy Schwarz that you can prove, um, particularly in this case, um, but I just don't feel like going through the details, I guess. Um, but anyways, um, so this is an inequality which says that if you take the inner product of x and y, take its norm and square it. Now, in, in, in this case, we're dealing with um, like vectors in Rn or Rm. Um, and so we don't need to take the absolute value before squaring it. However, this is important because this is true for more general types of inner products, in which case, um, inner products in which um, the inner product of two things might not be a real number. You can have types of inner products where the inner product of two things is a complex number. And in that case, you do need to take the absolute value and then square it. Um, but it doesn't hurt to include the absolute value signs here, so I'll just include it. So this is less than or equal to the inner product of x and x times the inner product of y and y. Which, if we remember, this is precisely... Um, so the norm of x is the square root of the inner product of x with, with x. So this is the norm of, of x squared times the norm of y squared. All right. So we're going to be using this in this uh, exercise. So anyways, given um, t, let ti be a vector consisting of, okay, so t is a linear transformation, which means it's a matrix. And so we can write it as t, lowercase t i j, where i ranges between the rows and j ranges between the columns. So this is a map from rm to rn, which means that uh, you multiply T on the right by a matrix in Rm, and so there has to be M columns. So this is N rows and M columns. So anyways, capital T up, up, or to the, with um, I in the superscript, this is going to be Ti1 through Tim. So this is the ith row of T. So let this, so that we can write t as t1 through tn. So we've got n rows in this matrix, and each row is in the form ti. And so we can write our matrix like this. 
This looks like a vector, but each of the entries of this thing is a row vector. And so this is exact, this is actually a matrix. Okay, so if, let tau be the max here. I'll write it um, down here. So if we're gonna let tau be the maximum over all i, so i is going to be ranging over the different rows. So i is going to be between one and n, and j is going to range over the columns, so j will be between one and m. We're going to take the maximum of the absolute value of tij. Then, for every single i between one and n, let's take t. Let's take the norm of ti squared. Well, this is just going to be the sum of the square of all of the entries in ti. So let's see here. So ti consists of ti1 through tim. So it's going to be the norm of it squared is going to be ti1 squared all the way through tim squared. But each tij, so if we have tij, then the absolute value of tij is going to be less than or equal to tau for any i and any j. So ti1 squared is going to be less than or equal to tau squared. And ti2 squared is going to be less than or equal to tau squared etc. And tim squared is going to be less than or equal to tau squared. So this thing that I, this sum that I've just written is going to be less than or equal to tau squared times, well, how many of these terms do we have? We have m of them. So m times tau squared. Thus, we have the following. Let's compute tx. So this is, again, we can write this as t1 through tn times the vector x. And so the way that matrix multiplication is defined is that the first row is going to be the inner product of t1 with x because we take the first row of the matrix and multiply it by the column vector. So this is going to be so here. So we have the inner product of t1 with x then we go all the way down until we get the um, inner product of t n? No, this should be m, right? No, it's n. n with x. Okay, and so then this sum is the square root of the sum from i equals 1 to n of the inner product of t i x squared square root, just by the definition. Okay, and we can throw absolute value signs on here because that doesn't change anything. Because the, this is, this, the inner product of two vectors is a real number. And we're squaring it. So changing the sign of the thing you're squaring doesn't change it. Okay, so then this so, yeah, so this is less than or equal to, now we can use Cauchy-Schwarz on the inside of the sum. So we got the sum from i equals 1 to n of the norm of ti squared times the norm of x squared. Square root on the outside here. Okay, so this is a sum, and each sum has the term norm of x squared in it, so we can factor that out. So we end up with the norm of x squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n. And then norm of ti squared, well, we said that this is just m times tau squared. All right, and then so this is just going to be the square root x squared. And then we're adding up m times tau squared n times, so we get nm tau squared square root, 
And then we take the square root of everything. And so then this is equal to square root of n times m times tau times the norm of x. So let m be precisely this number, square root of n times m times tau. And then we're done. So I don't know why they used h in here. Um, I just used x because I'm used to using x as a vector. In fact, we should all be at this point because that's what we used throughout this, um, throughout this section. Um, but yeah, so I had to use Cauchy's Schwarz, which is more of an advanced um, tool that I would like to have not needed to use here. But I don't know how to do this exercise without it. There's probably a way. I don't know the way. Um, so anyways, that's all there is to this exercise, and so we're done.